And all of a sudden, she hears about Jesus. She hears about Jesus. How does she hear about Jesus? Someone was telling her about Jesus. Somebody said, hey, did you hear what Jesus did? Did you hear about Jesus? He's healing everyone. Everyone who touches him gets well. And everyone he touches gets well. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is your answer. Hi, everybody. My name is Mary Beth Winchell, and I want to share with you and open up with you the word of God in Mark chapter five. The entire chapter is on healing, but I want to talk about Jairus's daughter and the woman with the issue of blood. I want to open up this passage again and talk about what what the word of God is saying to us and what God wants us to know. <clears throat> There's something about breaking open the word. There's something about taking the word to a new level, not just reading the word, not just praying the word, not just hearing the word, but discussing the word, listening to the word, being taught, meditating on the word. There's a lot to it. And when our heart is open to hearing the word, when our heart is open and mixed with faith that comes from the Holy Spirit, the word of God can change us. The word of God is life-giving, but we have to be receiving. Our receptors have to be open. You know how a um, TV when you turn the TV on, all of a sudden you get whatever that station is broadcasting, whatever, whatever that network is broadcasting, you receive as soon as you turn it on. But as long as it's off, you're not receiving anything. But that doesn't mean that it's not coming. You have to turn it on in order to receive. You don't call up the TV station and say, hey, I want to watch television. Can you start broadcasting? No, they're always broadcasting. God is always broadcasting and he's waiting for you to tune in with ears of faith with the heart of faith so that's what's going to happen right now as i open up the word you're going to hear it and it's going to do something to you or it won't depends on you and and uh the holy spirit <laughs> the holy spirit working in you is going to make this word come alive okay so that's what i'm believing that's why I'm here. Okay, so this is an awesome story about a woman who's been sick for 12 years. For 12 years, she has suffered, the Bible says, at the hands of the doctors. At the, she has suffered greatly, it says, for 12 years. You may be that person who is tired of suffering. Well, she was tired of suffering, but but her money ran out. And when her money ran out, the doctors ran out. When the doctors ran out, her faith in the doctors ran out. Everything ran out. She was hopeless at this point, devastated, and had no hope and nothing to count on, nothing to believe in, nothing to look forward to, except more of the suffering, more of being an unclean woman, more of being quarantined. All she had to look forward to was more of the same day after day of being separated from the world. Because when you're unclean, and she was considered unclean because she had that issue of blood, so she couldn't even go to church. She couldn't go into the marketplace. She couldn't hang out with anyone, let alone touch somebody. And, and all of a sudden, she hears about Jesus. She hears about Jesus. How does she hear about Jesus. Someone was telling her about Jesus. Somebody said, hey, did you hear what Jesus did? Did you hear about Jesus? He's healing everyone. Everyone who touches him gets well, and everyone he touches gets well. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is your answer. She said to herself one day, okay, my, her faith switched to Jesus. <laughs> her faith face turned. She set her mind on Jesus and set her face like flint. I mean, she, she was determined. She was afraid. Oh, but she was determined with faith that if she just touches the hem of his garment, if she just touches the hem of his garment, she will be healed. That's what she says to herself. She believes this. She said, if I just touch him, 
I will be healed. So she goes. She doesn't let anyone stop her. She doesn't let the crowd stop her. She doesn't let the fact that Jesus is walking with a synagogue official, somebody important on an important mission, going to a house where a little girl is dying. She doesn't let anything stop her from touching him. She doesn't let the law stop her from touching him. She touches him. Power comes out of her, him, into her. She feels in her body that she's healed. And Jesus stops and turns around and looks for her and says, who touched me? <laughs> and they're all like, Jesus, come on, everybody's touching you. And he goes, no, I felt power come out of me. And she trembling because she's been caught. Now she's got to really tell it all. And she does. And Jesus says, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go and be set free of your affliction. Man, as I'm saying that right now, I'm hearing this. God is saying this to you. Son, daughter, go and be free of your affliction for your faith has saved you. What was her faith? What faith saved her? What did her faith look like? What did Jesus recognize in her that he called faith? Was it her going to church every day? Was it her saying the prayers every day? Was it her reading her Bible every day? What faith did he see in her? How did he recognize faith in her? What, what faith did she have? What did her faith look like? We, I want to know, because I want that kind of faith. Her faith was simply believing he loved her and would do it for her. Faith, I say this all the time. I know you're going to hear it again if you've listened to any of my videos. Faith is not believing God can, but believing he will. She believed that God would. And he did. What are you believing? What are you hearing? I, I, I'm, I'm praying that when you come to God with faith and get healed, you go around telling everybody, hey, look what Jesus did for me. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. You get to spread the word. You get to tell people what Jesus is doing so that they will hear about Jesus and say, man, if he did it for you, he'll do it for me. We've got to start spreading the word just like they did. She heard about Jesus. Let people hear about Jesus through you after you get healed. Go receive that healing and start telling somebody about it. Amen. So now here's this man, Jairus, who comes to Jesus, falls at his feet and says, Jesus, my daughter's dying. Would you come and heal her? Just come and lay hands on her. And Jesus says, yes. Now they're on their way to Jairus's house. And Jairus is a synagogue official, somebody important. They're on their way. And the whole crowd is following because they all want to see what is Jesus going to do with this little girl? They're all going. They're all following him. And this is when the woman comes and stops the parade. She stops everything. And I want to just suggest to you that even though Jesus has a lot on his plate, he has time for you. I don't care how old you are. He stopped everything for a a, an elderly woman. And if he'll do that for her, he'll do it for you. He, he said, yeah, I know I'm going for this little precious 12-year-old girl, but you, he stopped everything for this woman. So they start back up again, and they're on their way. And I, I got to read this from Mark chapter 5. While he was speaking, people from the synagogue officials house arrived and said to Jairus, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, don't, do not be afraid, just have faith. I just want to talk about this for a while because these few sentences are huge. Stop. Don't bother the teacher anymore. We're afraid to tell you that the worst news you could ever expect just happened. Your daughter died. And Jesus says to this man, disregarding the message, do not be afraid. Jairus, just have faith. Do not be afraid, just have faith. Well, Jesus is expecting a lot from Jairus. He was just told his daughter died. And Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. Just have faith. Have faith in what? He's not leaving Jesus' side. Jesus is not leaving his side because Jesus knows he needs 
He needs him to be right by him. Otherwise, he's going to fall. He's going to go, uh, he's going to start moping. He's going to start being depressed. He's going to start weeping. He's going to start telling everybody. He's going to start um, being becoming depressed. And Jesus doesn't give him a chance. Now, Jesus disregards the message. This is, this is huge because we regard the message. We hear the diagnosis and we are all broken up about it. We're choked up about it. We, we let that message, that diagnosis haunt us, drive us, um, destroy us. And Jesus disregarded the message. And I want to encourage you to disregard the message just like Jesus in turn and give Jesus your attention instead of the message. And what we do is we give this disease or whatever it is that's attacking us so much of our time, so much of our energy, and it becomes who we are. It becomes what we do and what we, and then it becomes what we believe in. And we start to believe in the symptoms. We start to believe. And Jesus is saying, don't be afraid. Just believe, believe in me, believe. And you know what, I just want to say, I, I want to conclude with, Jesus has more for you. The story's not over. It's not over. It may look over. It may feel over. In the natural, it may be over, but God has more. God has more coming your way. Your best days are in front of you not behind you. God is not finished. You know, once I was, the, a friend of mine called me and said, Mary Beth, will you come to my work where I work? It was a hospital. Will you come and pray with a nurse friend of mine? She, her cancer has returned and she's headed to MD Anderson. And I said, sure. And I went there and I, I went there trembling because I was like, okay, she's wanting me, me to pray for. I told all my friends, got people to pray with me, let them know where I was going. And I went there and I read to her. We, she actually led me to this closet and we're sitting there practically in the dark. And I, I got this sense, like this is Acts, the Acts, the, P, the, the book of Acts, you know, when the brand new Christians gathering together, huddling together. And I just shared with her the word I mean, words, stories in the Bible about God healing. And I just saw faith rise up in her eyes. And we prayed together. I remember laying hands on her, praying for her and leaving there. And I left there just on fire because I had such hope. And two days later, she called and said, Mary Beth, a friend of mine called and said, Mary Beth, it didn't work. She's on her way to MD Anderson. It didn't work. She kept saying that it didn't work. And I hung up the phone and said, what do you mean it didn't work? God works. It worked. I saw faith rise up in her. I got on my knees and I was like praying, Lord, what happened? I know it worked. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and said, it's not over. So I call up my friend and I said, can I have her, her telephone number? Now, this was back when cell phones were not like they are today. People didn't always have them on them, let alone have them turned on. So I call her, she answers and I said, Actually, I don't even remember if she answered or if I left a message, but I said, I have a word for you from God. It's not over. It may seem over, but it's not over. And my friend called me um, a couple of days later and said, they found no cancer in center home. Praise God. It's not over. Don't believe in the report. Believe in God. So I... I I want to share with you one other thing about the story, maybe two other things. You know, when they came to, G to Jairus, they said, don't bother the teacher anymore. And so many times we don't want to bother our prayer partners. We don't want to bother each other. And I want to encourage you, bother me. Bother me that you're still sick. I want to hear. I want to know. We as a prayer group and as a church need to be there for you because it's not just your faith. It's our faith that's in, at question, our faith that's at stake. It's his name that's at stake. And so we want to we want to keep on praying for you, keep on believing with you. We want our faith to rise. If you're not getting well and you've asked for prayer over and over, don't quit because give us a chance. Give our faith a chance to rise up 
and and pray with you. Don't give up yet. God's not through. Maybe this is your time. Maybe this is the time. Um, you can't over hope. There's no such thing as false hope. You know, so many times we don't want to get, we don't want to pray because we're afraid of, of giving somebody false hope. There's no such thing as false hope when it comes to God. Trust God to do something with your prayer. God's, you're, when you pray, you're giving God an opportunity to do something. Give him the opportunity. Ask and ask with faith. Ask with expectancy. Expect God to do something. Be like that woman who said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be saved. Give God something to work with. I want to encourage you to get your hopes up. I know so many times we don't want to get people's hopes up, but that's wrong. I want to encourage you to get your hope up. God will not disappoint your hope in him. And hope in him doesn't mean like, well, I hope he comes through. It means my hope is in that he is coming through for me. That's what real hope is. Our hope is a real thing. It's real hope. It's not just a wondering hope. I hope so. That's a different word. That's a different hope. Our hope is sure. Is, is we're confident in our hope for our hope is in him. So when those symptoms come and they keep coming, let that, let that be a trigger to turn our eyes to Jesus, to trust in him, to have hope in him, to have faith in him. And picture Jesus saying, don't be afraid, just have faith. Anytime you're going through something, just have that picture. Remember Jesus's words, don't be afraid, just have faith. One more thing I want to leave you with regarding the story about Jairus, the synagogue official whose daughter died and Jesus raised from the dead. As he was going to that house where the baby was, where the little girl was, he left all the scoffers behind. You know, everyone, he didn't take everyone with him into that room, especially. He only took those who were close to him those who, and the mother and father, everyone else, he said, get out, because he, you know, he didn't want surrounding him all of this faith, lack of faith. He doesn't want doubt surrounding Jairus. He wanted to keep Jairus free of ever, any doubt. And so we have to be the same way. We have to say, don't tell everybody what you're going through, because they're not going to have faith. They're not, you know, be careful who you share with. If you share what's going on with you to just everybody, they're going to give you their opinion. They're going to tell you what to look forward to. They're going to tell you how bad it is. They're going to commiserate with you. They're going to feel sorry for you. And all that will not help you. That only makes you follow that way and want to be pitied, want, it, want people to feel sorry for you. And if you go that route, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get pity, but that's what you're going to keep getting. And that's what you're inviting. If you're inviting pity, you're not inviting the healing. So be careful what you do with your words and your mind and who you're fellowshipping with and, and hanging out with. And be careful of the words that come out of your mouth. Oh, I hate my life. This is what's going to happen to me. I'm, I'm going to die. Those words are not going to help you to live. You've got, they're not going to encourage you with faith. You have to keep Jesus real close to you when you're walking through something. Keep his words real close to you. Keep his words coming out of your mouth. I will live and not die and declare the work of the Lord. I will have a testimony. I will share what God is doing with me. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me. Thank you, Lord, that you died for me. Thank you, Lord, that you took away my infirmities and bore my diseases. Thank you, God, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Thank you, Lord, that um, by your stripes I am healed. And you wanna keep those kind of people around you who are gonna encourage you with faith in the word of God. Amen.